Um, today we will change the topic and we will speak about thin domains. So previously it was other type of singular perturbation. Now we have a domain of this type. Uh, and uh, this domain is obtained uh, by uh, compressing cross-section uh, in H times and keeping the length with the same uh, scale. Uh, so omega H small is a uh, variables on the plane such so that h minus 1 y which is rapid variable or stretch coordinate is in a fixed domain so we take a cylinder and compress in two directions and we obtain a rod uh, this is a rapid variables or fast variables as you wish And if you do the same but in another direction, if you compress with respect to one variable, you obtain a plate. Analysis is approximately the same. And moreover, I'm not going to discuss elasticity problem, which is of very interest because all uh, engineering objects, they consist of, of, age, of uh, plates, of rods, of shells, and so on. But I would like to show you uh, first, this lecture as a standard analysis of thin domains. And on the next one, I will show some things which show that it's not so simple as we will see on the first lecture. And uh, what is it of importance that um, the material of the second lecture today, uh, it is not done for elasticity at all. So only for, for scalar case. Also, many things can be predicted to be true, but uh, I don't know the analysis of this. Okay, so we will consider today only uh, second order uh, scalar equations. And we will play with different boundary conditions. To, to just now, for the time being, we will put here the reflect condition on the ends of the road and Neumann condition, so Dirichlet and Neumann conditions on the lateral side of the road the equation we will write in metric notation so that we have a gradient and the gradient for me is a column I will consider only 3D case also two-dimensional cases of interest and also n-dimensional, but let us reduce our questions to this. Uh, and uh, I will use the following notation. Or also d over dz is dz and this is nabla y, so this is nabla y, uh, two dimensional gradient, and here it stands this. It's very convenient. Then uh, the equation by itself is to be written in the following form. This is a sign of transposition, so it's a row. A, principle I can put dependence here on. Uh, on variables, but let us consider the simplest case, namely constant coefficient. So this is in QH, then minus nu. Nu is a vector of column column of unit outward normal so that of course it depends on rapid variables 
because it is just the same as the unit normal to the cross section and it changes rather quickly so it's in red variables. On CH, this is the lateral side of the road so that we have D and the delivery condition. So put on the ends of the road. So this is the mixed boundary value problem and what we need to find we need to find asymptotics. Asymptotics means we, first we have to guess about asymptotic ansatz and, and here the equation on, on dependence on age of both, of right hand side, how to choose a dependence problem properly. Not to choose but how to fix because problem is linear so we, we have some freedom to choose this. Um, to choose this dependence. And of course, if we have chosen the dependence on H of right hand sides, then we have to find the symptotic. So we, we have to match ansatz for right hand side with the ansatz for, for, for solution. As for right hand side, we will choose the following thing. So this function is of order H minus 1. And uh, here stands a fixed function depending on the rapid variable in the cross section and the slow variable along the, along the road. And remainder is still to be, to be put here because not every right hand side can be presented in this way. As for right hand side of normal condition, we assume the, the approximate is the same, but here I put h in power 0 and it is related to the order of operator because if you stretch coordinates, uh, namely this one, y coordinates, you will get here h minus 2 and so we are left with h minus 1 because of it. But here only h minus 1, so it's worth to put here h minus 0, h in power 0, minus or plus, it doesn't matter. So this is the and that's for right hand side of boundary condition. Now we have fixed this thing and we need to guess about and that's for, uh, for solution. So this is a bit, um, it's a bit, there is no machinery to, to, to fix. Also it's not completely true, there is a machinery, but it's a rather complicated story. It's possible to, to uh, predict asymptotic ansatz for thin domain for, uh, for uh, homogenization problems, but it, it is far away from the, uh, from the top, from the goal, which are, uh, from the um, problems we are discussing now. So, that's why let us consider this as a guess. So, we guess and then we justify. This is the main idea. Of course, the main question is what to put here. So what is the first asymptotic term? And the first asymptotic term in our case is this one, and we will prove this. Then we need to construct correction term because the correction term defines the limit problem, the one-dimensional problem. Uh, I will say a bit more about what does it mean one-dimensional problem here. And also we, we can continue. So as usual we write here dots for inessential terms so that uh, we, we have in mind to continue the process of constructing asymptotics, but now, now we are interested in only in three terms here. What is the main goal of our investigation? It's to reduce complexity of the problem. Three-dimensional problem is complex, rather complex, 
uh, even to solve on, on the modern computers. If, if you speak about shells, then it's not possible to, still not possible to, to, to do, uh, to, do the, to solve the three-dimensional problem with the appropriate precision. So that's why there is an idea of modeling. We, we have spoken about modeling uh, for bodies with defects. And in this case, modeling were uh, related to the theory of self-adjoint extensions. Here it's much more simple. Uh, the, the, uh, the attributes of the model is a one-dimensional ordinary differential equation which can be solved by hands, which is rather, rather simple. Uh, what we uh, how we reflect in our synthetic ansatz that our uh, model is one-dimensional here. The main asymptotic term depends on the, only on the longitudinal variable, so on one variable. So if we, we don't know n n this term, we have to find these correction terms. But from the very beginning, we, we, we think about modeling. In principle, what I would like to say is that asymptotic methods are very convenient for modeling. Uh, and engineering and uh, other mechanical sciences, uh, they are uh, always uh, refer to models. So model of something, uh, it means that to adapt the problem for rather simple calculation, because more, much more important is to get a simple formula than to, to, to uh, to do complicated mathematical analysis. So, now, here it's a matrix A of constant coefficient, so that if we write this operator in symbolic notation, we will get a row as a gradient, then a matrix, matrix of size 3 cross 3, and here the column of gradient, this one. So it's convenient to uh, use the following notation for, for the matrix. So this is the matrix A, and it consists of uh, A, Y, Y, block. This is a block which uh, is of size 2 cross 2, and it creates here differentiation in Y. Uh, we will change it for, for eta, so it's uh, the block which will appear in the limit problem. Here stands A, Y, Z, here stands A, Z, Y, and here, st so this is the column of uh, A2, and here stands a scalar A, Z, Z. So, if we denote this operator by L, then L of nabla X, after the change of variables y into eta equal to h minus 1 y, we get here h minus 2 l0, uh, l2 of uh, nabla eta plus h minus 1 l1 of nabla eta z, dz plus l0 h0, l0, dz, where l2 of nabla eta is but minus minus nabla y, sorry, nabla eta here, t a y y nabla eta. So, it's just to Extract for here dependence on the rapid variable. And due to this parameter, they appear h minus 2. L1 of nabla eta is minus dz z slow variable az y nabla eta minus nabla eta t a y z dz. So it's an operator, uh, second order again, but if we have here only differentiation in, 
differentiation in eta, here we have both in z and in eta. And LC rule of dz, I forgot to write here dz, is a quite simple operator. The same can be done with uh, Neumann, uh, Neumann uh, boundary condition operator n of eta nabla x, and uh, the decomposition is shorter, namely it's h minus 1 n 2 of eta nabla Eta plus h zero and two and one of eta dz, where n two of eta d eta is. Uh, by the way, I'm sorry. Please kill here minus. It's, it's reflection of this minus, but this is wrong. No, not wrong, but it's not convenient. This is new prime is new one, new two. It's a two-dimensional vector of normal because three-dimensional vector of normal is just this one, mu1, mu2, 0. Because on the lateral side of the uh, road, normal is always perpendicular to that direction. So uh, the third component is 0. So we have this and we have this. All operators are written, and that's a, has been have been given. So now we put all these formulae into the problem and extract uh, coefficients at similar powers of small parameter, equalize them to zero or to the right hand side, and then we get a sequence of so-called limit problems. And it is necessary to solve these problem, uh, problems in order to get the limit equation. So I erase everything because some uh, calculations must, must be done. I remember this thing, you have this thing. So, let us follow our plan. First of all, let us collect coefficients at h in power minus 3. And minus 3, h in power minus 3, is h minus 2, h minus 1. This is from ansatz for solution, and this is from decomposition of operator. So, what we will have? We have this. And nothing from the right hand side because this is too much, h in power minus 3. And now we are satisfied with our guess because this equation is fulfilled. Differentiation, uh, there is no dependence on eta. Uh, then h minus 2 uh, for boundary conditions with the same reason as you remember in a, in a period of for Neumann boundary conditions, they appear only h minus 1, so we again take the main asymptotic term. Uh, we will get this thing, and this is in omega. 
And again, this, is, this boundary condition is satisfied because the main asymptotic term of our one that doesn't depend on F. Of course, this term, this ansatz, the, the, the form of this ansatz has been created uh, with reference to this problem because it's necessary to satisfy it. So this is the first step. Second one. Now, we, we have to reduce the powers of epsilon. H minus 2. So we, what we get here is this. This comes from uh, application of the main, uh, main part of operator L to the second term. So, and here H minus 2 is H minus 2, H minus 0. This is from UH and this is from operator L. And here on the right we then have nabla et eta t a y z d z w of z. Here this operator had h minus one as a coefficient. This had h minus one, so together it gives h minus two. But here we have a differentiation in eta. And it kills this term completely. It is not the case if the matrix eta depends on eta, on the matrix A depends on eta. It's like in homogenization. But uh, we uh, agreed to consider the simplest case. The same here. It's also zero. I would like to emphasize that we still do not have income from the right hand side because it's h minus 2 and right hand side started with h minus 1. Now boundary conditions h minus 1 and here we have minus uh, uh, new prime t a y y nabla eta v1 of eta z is equal to minus new prime t a y z d z so we have got non-trivial problem because there is no differentiation in eta and we have here some function namely derivative of our unknown main asymptotic term. So this is not a trivial problem, but what we can obtain, we can obtain the solution in explicit form. By the way, it is not uh, the particular point for, for this color equation. In elasticity, even for any anisotropic and even for uh, in homogeneous elasticity problem, this problem also can be solved almost explicitly. I, what does it mean almost? It means that it can be solved with a special notation. So, and these uh, special functions which appear in dependence on uh, cross-section, they have their names and uh, they are very important for, for to characterize uh, some domains and so on. So, it is not a particular problem, a particular point for this. Uh, what we can do, we can solve this explicitly. And uh, so we can write a y y minus 1 a y z dz w z. And here we put minus eta power t. So if we apply this operator to this uh, guy, first of all, nabla eta of eta in power t, it's, it's a unit matrix. It's 
a gradient applied to a uh, row and we obtain unit metric. So this gives you uh, nothing, so gradient eliminates this. Then A in YY, AYY, they disappear and we get new prime minus new prime AYZ derivative. So just this thing. So we have solved this problem completely. So let, let me write it upstairs because I will need this uh, formula. It's a h minus 1. So what we get? We get the same operator acting on w2 of eta z, z, third term of asymptotic ansatz for a solution. And it will be equal to number eta t ayz uh, dz v1 of eta z plus dz az y nabla eta v1 of eta z plus dz az z dz w of z so this is uh, remainder of the second term multiplied with the operator which has h minus 1 and here uh, the main term h minus 1 at v and here 0 and what is important here you hear 8 of f of the, the trace of right hand side because as you remember and that's for right hand side it, it started with h minus 1 f now the boundary conditions. the decomposition operator is shorter so it doesn't touch uh, the uh, function VW itself and uh, coefficient on G was H in power 0 so we just collected his, here terms of H in power 0 uh, we have a problem with arbitrary in principle arbitrary right hand side here this is a Doiman problem and there is no chance to, no, there is a chance that it can be occasionally uh, solved. But in principle, Neumann problem has a compatibility condition. And it is necessary to satisfy this compatibility condition. And now we take into account that we also have some arbitrary function, here, uh, not here, this arbitrary function, and we will use this arbitrariness of the function W for satisfying compatibility condition. So let us denote this right hand side by f of eta italic and here it's g of eta z and the compatibility condition for this problem reads integral over omega f of eta z d eta plus integral over d omega g of eta z ds eta is equal to zero. So uh, the main the main vector of the 
loading is equal to zero vanishes. This is for elasticity, the same here. So let us calculate. And I will write these uh, calculations in a convenient form. So first of all, we integrate this. And we will get So this is a constant, constant, mat, constant matrix. We integrate over omega and we get the measure of omega multiplied with the same matrix. Then we uh, integrate this guy. What we will have, again, measure of omega, dz, dz, Minus because of minus here. Now plus applied to this is unit matrix, so we have see this thing, and here stands a z y a y y power minus one a y z d z w. So two terms has been calculated. Now third term, this one, and we combine it with this one. So we get plus integral over omega, nabla eta t, and let us denote this by y. Because we see that y appears here as well. So we have eta of y of eta z d eta plus minus sorry integral over d omega mu prime of eta t y of eta z ds eta and due to the gauss formula integration by parts gives us that this integral is equal to this so they cancel each other And now we are left with uh, these two terms which came from right hand side. What we can do, we can do nothing, we only can write this. And this must be equal to zero. If it is zero, then this problem has a solution. And we are happy to see that this is an ordinary differential equation for W. In the same way, we, they appear, it's necessary to do much more cal calculations. In the same way, they appear Kirchhoff theory of plates, Kirchhoff equation for plates, uh, Kirchhoff. Um, I forgot the name of German mathematician, Klepp, uh, theory of rods, uh, Kirchhoff love theory of plates, of shells, and so on and so forth. Uh, in principle, homogenization is of the same type of procedure. So you, you guess for asymptotic ansatz, then write such um, problems, limit problems, solve it one after the other and then uh, arrive at a problem which has no solution and compatibility condition for this solution gives you the homogenized equation. So this is a rather general procedure. So let us write down the limit problem we obtained and then maybe it's uh, worse to make a break because then there starts a new, it's, it's a logical point. Uh, what I would like to, to mention is that if occasionally it is zero, it could be that for any z it's zero. Then we arrive at, at the trivial problem, some elliptic operator acting on, uh, on w is equal to zero. So w is equal to zero, because we will write also uh, boundary conditions. Then it was not correct on that. Uh, it's a, a remark. remark that ansatz can be changed for the following one, h minus 2, f1 of uh, 
plus h minus 1 f0 and h minus 1 g1. While f1 and g1 satisfy this condition. Then, and this is of importance because then uh, in the limit problem, I will show the matrix M. In the limit problem, they will appear uh, the following right hand side. M minus. For, for scalar problem, it's of no importance because it's uh, something. But the same appears in elasticity problems. And this is nothing but uh, residual stresses. So, which are of importance for many problems, especially in plasticity. Okay, but here we have this F0, nothing else. So, again, uh, playing with ansatz, you, you, you can uh, satisfy many mechanical, uh, you can explain many mechanical uh, notations. So where f of z is but this sum of these integrals. And m it's a matrix, or oh, sorry, it's a number which can be calculated through the original metric no. Mnemonic rule here that uh, from uh, on the sides you have z and here you have y. So minus 1 delete this y. Okay, it doesn't matter. Whereas this is the area of, cross of reduced cross section. And this is a number which depends on the matrix. If you have matrices which are dependent on z and uh, uh, Eta. It could be. Then there stands integral and this area disappears. So this is a general answer. And what is important is that due to the positive definiteness of original matrix, this, this number is positive. It's not a complicated story to verify, so I can leave it as, as a home work. So we have arrived. at the limit equation and we impose the Dirac mechanism. So this problem has a unique solution, of course. So we have constructed the main asymptotic term. We also constructed the second asymptotic term because there was explicit formula uh, for second asymptotic term through uh, the first one. And also we have satisfied the uh, compatibility condition uh, for the third problem, so we can construct, we can find, or we can prove that there exists a solution of the limit problem for any z. The question appears how many asymptotic terms we have constructed. And the answer is only one. Why? Because the second asymptotic term, this term, uh, can be found in the following form. Where this is a term which is which has been written, which I wrote, which has an explicit uh, expression for uh, through, through W. And this is again the term which is similar to W because Neumann problem has a uh, homogeneous Neumann problem has a constant solution. And constant in, annual, in our sense means any function dependent on Z because constant in eta, in rapid variables. So, and we know nothing about this function. We have no 
idea about it. You know. So that uh, we can hope that only one term is, uh, is constructed. The second question, can we iterate our procedure and can we construct all terms? The answer is, the answer is no. It is necessary to change ansatz. They appear effects of boundary layer. I will discuss them next half of the lecture. And uh, what I only want to mention is that it's possible to justify uh, the asymptotic expansion. And as we agreed to write uh, simplest uh, estimates, then uh, the difference between solution of the problem and term h minus 1 w of z So this is the estimate for difference. So we have constructed the first asymptotic term. Norm, energy norm of this difference because norm of this part is h minus 2 multiplies the cross section h in power 0 so it's h in power 1 half but if you want to compare gradient of d, d over dz uh of x minus h minus 1 w of z so you want to compare this the answer is So precision of this calculation is nothing for derivatives. This is a good approximation for functions itself. It's somehow not bad approximation for energy, but for derivatives is nothing. And the same happens in elasticity. So in elasticity, well-known edge effects produce that stresses, which are of interest, are found with a zero precision. I mean. No, not zero precision. With the error of 100, uh, as you wish, percentage. So, we will speak about boundary layer next.